The Fleet Solid Support Program of the UK Royal Fleet Auxiliary has successfully completed its preliminary design review. The Fleet Solid Support Program now enters its detailed design phase, and construction of the first ship is scheduled to begin in 2025. At 216 meters in length each, they will be among the largest vessels in the British fleet, second only to the Queen Elizabeth-class aircraft carriers. In 2023, Team Resolute, a consortium led by Navancha UK with partners Harland & Wolf and BMT, was awarded a £1.6 billion contract to design and build the fleet solid support ships. Construction will take place at Harland & Wolf's shipyards in Belfast and Appledore, with additional modules being built in Spain. It is expected to generate 1,200 jobs in UK shipyards and an additional 800 jobs throughout the UK supply chain. The fleet solid support ships are designed to supply munitions, stores and provisions to the Royal Navy's aircraft carriers, destroyers and frigates. They will also offer logistical and operational support including missions against piracy and terrorism, and will work closely with allies on joint operations. Team Resolute will deliver three fleet solid support ships to the Royal Fleet Auxiliary, a naval auxiliary fleet owned by the UK's Ministry of Defence. The new ships will replace the RFA Fort Austin and RFA Fort Rosalie, which were sold to Egypt, and the RFA Fort Victoria, which is set to be decommissioned in 2028. Construction on the first ship is set to begin in 2025, with all three support ships expected to be operational by 2032. Each fleet solid support ship will measure 216 meters in length and 34.5 meters in width. The ships will have a displacement of 39,000 tons, about the same as the Tide-class tankers, and a maximum speed of up to 19 knots, and a range of 11,000 nautical miles. The ship's design features a full-width integrated bridge and enclosed bridge wings, three heavy replenishment at sea delivery rigs and stations for solid and liquids reception at sea will be part of the ships. Self-defense fit appears to be pretty standard with mounts for two 30mm automated small-caliber guns and two phalanx close-in weapon systems. By the 2030s, phalanx could be replaced by directed energy weapons, assuming fleet solid support has sufficient spare electrical generation capacity. This will be backed with manually served GMPGs and .50 caliber machine guns for force protection. The .50 caliber replaces the Mark 44 minigun, which officially goes out of Royal Navy service in March 2023. They are not shown on the mock-ups, but it is likely fleet solid support will also be fitted with soft-kill decoy launchers and the surface ship torpedo defense system and supporting sonar 2170. The vessels will have a storage capacity of 9,000 Mila squatters for supplies and stores and enable centralized replenishment at sea control position. They will feature a flight deck capable of accommodating all helicopters operated by the UK's armed forces, and its hangar can house two Royal Navy Merlins, along with extra room for current and future drones and unmanned aerial systems. Capable of accommodating 101 people, the ships will have room for an additional 80 personnel to assist with operations or to accommodate embarked helicopters. The large flight deck and twin hangar would allow fleet solid support to fill in for RFA Argus in the aviation training role at times. As Argus will be redesignated as a littoral strike platform, the availability of her big deck for rotary wing aircrew training could be more limited. Fleet solid support will also be capable of embarking large items of freight for general transportation as a supplement to the civilian strategic sea lift vessels if needed. The fleet solid support ships will be equipped with four main engines, twin propellers and shaft lines, and two diesel generators. They will feature GE Vernova's C-Pulse active front-end power converters, 
as well as hybrid electric induction motor generators for power takeoff and power take-in, complete with resilient shock mounts, flexible coupling, and hosing. The new vessels will feature sensor solutions provider Hensolt UK's Quadome Naval 3D Air and Surface Surveillance Radar, Air Traffic Management Systems, and Kelvin Hughes Integrated Navigation Bridge Systems. The Quadome 3D Air and Surface Surveillance Radar is equipped with the latest software-defined active electronically scanned array technology. It features an integrated identification, friend or foe antenna, and will be compatible with the Hensold MSSR 2000 EFF interrogator. The radar offers exceptional value in terms of operational performance, surpassing small target detection and volume tracking and mission systems interaction capabilities previously only found in more expensive radar systems. The Quadome radar's operational benefits include simultaneous 3D air and surface surveillance with various specialist modes of operation. It is user-friendly and easy to maintain, reducing the burden on operators in terms of manpower, training, and skills. The Kelvin Hughes INBS includes SharpEye naval navigation radars and multifunction displays. The INBS can be tailored to meet specific operational and technical requirements, including redundancy and security options, with a seamless open interface to other ship systems. The multifunction displays simplify access to navigation tasks such as radar, charts, helicopter control, and conning display. The vessels are designed to achieve net carbon zero by the end of their 30-year service lives. The design complies with Lloyd's class, statutory and environmental regulations. Names for the ships are unlikely to be announced until the first steel is cut, but there is speculation they could follow those of previous RFA solid storage ships. The obvious candidates would be RFA Stromness, Linus, and Tarbatness. The Ness class served from the mid-1960s, before all three were sold for further service to the U.S. Military Sealift Command in the early 1980s. Stromness saw action in the Falklands War, as she had not yet been transferred to the U.S. These are evocative names that work well together, although there could be some political sensitivity around all being Scottish place names.